So as always, if you have any questions, uh, you can ask them during the lunch break. It's going to be very soon, 12.30. We seem to be like pretty much on time. Uh, or a coffee break that starts at 2.30 uh, p.m. Also, don't forget there's going to be party tonight at 5 p.m. Uh, DeFi happy hour at Shalanda Restaurant. Uh, so check out the website. You have to register there. So next up is going to be the last talk of our morning block, obviously last but not least, and it's going to be done by no other than Dean Tribble, uh, CEO of our diamond partner, Agoric. The talk is ISC Activation Vaults. Please give him a warm welcome. Okay, stage is yours. Actually, we renamed the talk, so it's Agoric, IST, and uh, what's next? But I'm going to start by waking everyone up with a question. You've got to have your arms to get a little bit of exercise here. So, what's the hardest thing to scale in blockchain? So, the first question, you know, what's the hardest thing to scale? Is it transaction rate? Everyone who thinks that's one of the really hard things to scale, raise your hand. No one? No one transaction rate? You know, number of transactions per block, anyone? Okay, how about number of programmers? <laughs> number of apps, maybe. Number of end users. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, now, the, ironically, the biggest footprint here was actually number of programmers, and indeed, that's one of the main places that Agoric started, but as uh, Victor will talk about on Monday, there's a lot of ideas of how one should also scale the users, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But Blockchain in general has only 18,000 some odd developers, according to the, the Electric Capital Study. And here I have Polkadot, Solana, Near, and you can see sort of relative to the big dog, which is, which is Ethereum. I tried to get the, 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 the um, Cosmos number in there, and it's about the same size of Polkadot, except it's growing really fast. And you know, with, with um, hundreds of actual chain projects, it's actually kind of hard to tell what are all the things you should look at. And so the, the Cosmos number is, is, is really interesting. But an important thing about this is we're still very early in the development of, uh, and, and the deployment of blockchain across the world. And so to scale, the number of, of developers in the ecosystem, and this is to scale, um, compared to just the number of JavaScript programmers, is a very, very, you know, we're, we're, there's a lot of fish in a, in, a, in a very small pond, and where we all want to get to is the world where we have lots more developers working on this stuff, right? And, you know, and, and uh, Cosmwasm is also important here. Rust has two million developers. That would be a bigger bubble here, but even if they were outrageously successful, there's still 10 plus million developers with 10 plus million problems to solve that they need to be bringing to those problems the high integrity of replicated execution that blockchain has at its core and the ability to orchestrate safe cooperation among strangers and orchestrate the business relationships in a safe and trustworthy fashion that you get from smart contracts. And if we don't enable those millions of developers to do it, we're still going to remain with crypto being a sideshow to the rest of the economy. So let's talk about that rest of the economy, right? Um, so 25 years ago, uh, I and various other punks of one form or another, some of us cypherpunks, some of us, you know, just punks, were talking to the larger banks, Bank of America, Bank Boston, Nations Bank, of which, you know, only one of those remains, but, you know, talking to a lot of these larger banks, about how this newfangled internet thing was not in fact full of scams. It was not in fact a flash in the pan that was going to go away, and it actually might matter to your business in the future. Ten years ago, you know, and not quite such young punks, we're talking to Chemical Bank, Chase Bank, about how cloud computing was not, in fact, a rehash of, of, of time sharing, was not, in fact, a flash in the pan, was not, in fact, full of scammers, and would matter to the future of your financial activities at this bank. Um, and, you know, so now, next, last question, how many people here use online banking and online bill pay, right? You know. <laughs> so it seems to have worked out okay, but the rhetoric, the language, the status at the time, 25 years ago, 10 years ago, for each of these technology waves was very much the kind of thing we're seeing now. Right? And so, again, we're just at the beginning, right? We're just at the beginning. Osmosis is just 
killing it, knocking it out of the park with 146 million in total value locked. That's, that's you know, really awesome, at least for the Cosmos ecosystem. There are, of course, bigger ecosystems if you put together all of the, uh, uh, the, 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 the top five projects on Ethereum. That's a lot more money. Um, and yeah, whatever, right? Still a bunch of fish in a very important, very valuable, small pond, right? And this is just fintech, right? This is, this is just that thing that 10 years ago we were saying, this could happen in the cloud. No, really, really, it's going to happen, right? Um, but if you add the, you know, the 1.5 uh, a trillion dollar freight industry, the $300 million, no, sorry, $300 billion, no, $200 billion, one of, uh, Victor will talk about these numbers on Monday, of the gaming industry, you know, $10 billion industry for comics. I mean, there's just all these retail industries that just any one of which can swamp all of the crypto engagement so far, and that's where the future market is. That's where Agoric is excited about building for. That's where all of us will come together and, and the connectivity that we get out of Cosmos will help us start to go out to those kinds of markets. But that's where we all need to be focusing. And, that's, that, and so that's what we're excited about. But why are we, Agoric, qualified to pursue that market, right? So there's some quotes from people that you might know. Zuko, uh, we've known for years from, you know, coming out of the cypherpunks community where a lot of Agoric folk have worked on early large-scale distributed systems technology starting from even back in the 80s through the 90s and on up to uh, the systems we have today. Um, we've, uh, our chief scientist, Mark Miller, is responsible for much of, the, much of the security elements in JavaScript, which realize, you know, sort of has this historical, you know, oh my god, it's this crazy language in a browser, but it literally controls trillions of dollars every day in everything from App Exchange on Salesforce to Bloomberg terminals to banking software backends. You know, JavaScript is a critical part of, of the financial infrastructure of the entire world. And you know, the creator of JavaScript, the creator of the Brave browser, you know, attributes much of the security to the work that, that, that uh, Mark Miller and others at, at Agoric have been doing driving security elements into the JavaScript standard to be enjoyed across all these different platforms from, you know, browsers to, to light bulbs um, on into, you know, the blockchain that, that, that Agoric is building. And then Zucky, who is probably floating around here somewhere, you just have to say block th blockchain three times, as I understand it. You know, he, he was the one that found some of the earlier distributed work and brought it to the table when the brilliant people designing Cosmos SDK were trying to solve some of these problems. And, you know, it aligned with the values of sovereign chains connecting in a large-scale distributed fashion with secure messaging and was part of the inspiration that led to the current architecture of IBC. And, and you know, I really appreciate the, the, the credit Zucky he gives to to to, to um, uh, that earlier work. Um, they're certainly you know they certainly brought a lot to the table, and the synergy has just been a, a, a wonderful thing that has led to you know the 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 success of IBC so far. And so these are things that are in our DNA, in the in the agoric DNA, and these are why we are you know really want to build and are really focused on going out as to build the general purpose smart contracting platform for all the many use cases that we need to, to roll out into that, um, what is it, $85 trillion uh, world economy, right? And, and until we get there, you know, just like cloud computing has got there, just like, you know, that, that newfangled internet thing has gotten there, blockchain will get there, but that is the target. That's the, 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 the ball to keep your eye on. Right, so what are we building, right? Obviously, it's Cosmos SDK-based, IBC-based, um, Tendermint or Comet, BFT, take your pick-based. Um, but it is for building smart contracts for those 14 million developers out there, for all the developers in the world. So being able to build smart contracts in the number one programming language on the planet, using the number one development environments on the planet, and the development techniques that, you know, that, 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 that the vast majority of programmers in the world use to build large-scale applications with an integrated economy, right? All of us here, you know, we're, we're, you know if, you, if you look at Ethereum, if you look at Cosmos, if you look at you know, Tezos, any of these things, they're paying gas fees in a speculative token. I think um, uh, um, Sunny touched on this earlier, right? You're paying in something that, well, it's a valuable asset, but it can't be stable. It goes up and down. This is a lot like paying your rent or your postage using gold or Apple shares. You can do it, 
But a few thousand years ago, we all discovered that having a stable token, a stable currency, a stable unit of account and medium of exchange makes for a better economy. It greases the gears of commerce, right? And, um, and one of the things that we noticed that was a big gap in the kinds of economies that were developing on these blockchains is you didn't see much in the way of long-term contracts. You didn't see mortgages. You didn't see subscription agreements. And that's partly because, you know, the engine couldn't handle timers and couldn't hand do async activity. But it's also because everything was priced in a volatile commodity such that you could not, you know, I mean, how much ETH would you commit to paying for rent or paying for your mortgage 30 years from now? Now, the answer is, I have no idea. Is it going to be 100 times or 1,000 times as valuable or half as valuable? Mm -hmm. you know, I don't know, and you don't know either. Right? So economies need intrinsically economic services to make them flourish, to help them flourish, to enable people that just want to get a job done, they just want to get a business out there, to be able to connect and partner with lots of other, you know, and, and, and economically work with their users um, and have, have agreements that last over time and all those kinds of things. Okay. So we have an intra integrated economy, which has taken quite a bit to build, and we'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. And then, um, and then a component model. And you know, JavaScript is not just the number one programming language because it's easy to learn or because it was in browsers first, because in fact, it was not in browsers first. Uh, it's, it's partly the number one programming language because it supports great frameworks, right? This, it has support for frameworks that you can't get in Solidity, you can't get in Rust, you can't get in, in all these other languages. It's these OO frameworks where a third party, someone that doesn't work for you that you don't know that's a total stranger, can build a component that you can safely incorporate into your application in order to build a richer and richer application. That kind of component model, React.js, right, is the kind of thing that, that ramps exponentially, literally, because builders can build using the tools that the previous builder last month created. They can incorporate a component that someone else of possibly higher skill or different skill built and incorporated into their application that solves their specific problem in the domain that they're expert in. That is the magic that creates exponential growth for a developer environment, and that's one of the primary reasons why JavaScript remains the number one programming language on the planet. Okay, so that's the, that's the general purpose flat platform, and Agoric has always been about that vision. How do we make a platform that the world's developers can solve the world's problems individually, without orchestration, in a permissionless fashion, and collaborate into a much, much larger, much, much safer uh, economy, and get the advantages of high integrity execution from blockchain and the, co the cooperation coordination that smart contracts bring you? Okay, and so those components, we've talked previously, and you'll see other talks by me and possibly others at Agoric, about the components that we were seeding our environment with, right? But we've crossed an important threshold where there's a lot of components that we didn't build, right? And so, um, you know, like we talk about NFT Legos, we talk about DeFi Legos, we talk about governance Legos and other things like that. You know, there's the Crya team sneaking around here, I'm pointing at you right there, right, um, who, uh, you know, th they're picking up the NFT Legos and they've got a lot of ideas of what they're doing. So they'll be talking about that later this summer, but if you corner them, you might get some alpha from them, we'll see. <laughs> Um, we've got DeFi Legos, which are the underpinning, you know, these components that are the underpinning of the inter-protocol and, the, and the, the, the stable token that is the backbone of the economy, but some of those pieces are built not by Agoric. Some of those pieces are built by, you heard Matthew here of Simply Staking, they run the Oracle network. They built the Oracle network. They built the components to be part of the ecosystem to enable an economy that launches with price information available to any contract that gets, that gets deployed. And then there's a lot of ecosystem th uh, things. You'll hear more about that later this summer. Okay. So, we've always had a roadmap. Um, a very high-level roadmap, but that roadmap was lay down the structure of components of digital assets where it's not, here's a big, long, random number, I hope you know what that means, or send money to a random number and hope something good happens. It's, I've got a JavaScript object that represents a ticket, and it's got an operation on it to say, what's the map to the venue? And oh, by the way, it's a digital asset that I can trade to you, or I can incorporate into a covered call and give you the option to buy this ticket for a certain price until Friday, right? And so this composable network of digital assets that can build on each other 
we needed the groundwork for that in the initial components before we then oh, you know, got other applications to leverage that architecture, to leverage that framework, so that developers could build components to be used by other developers. And that included the, the economic institutions. So that's mainnet one, and it was, it, we had to get there first before we could open the doors for third-party applications because they needed to, to deploy in an economy with an architecture that allowed component uh, marketplace to flourish. And so, you know, that's where we're at. So yesterday, a release candidate went to the validators for our uh, uh, final release for mainnet one, which is this first phase of laying the groundwork with the, uh, of the core contracts and the core architecture and the core framework for the Agora general purpose smart contracting platform. And I'm going to talk a little bit about specifics for that release, and then I'll go into what's next, which is the, the you know, where's the platform going, what's mainnet two and three. Okay, so the, this release to, to uh, complete the mainnet one uh, 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 value prop and launch us into mainnet two, Here's some key things that it has, right? It's got a bunch of Agoric VM enhancements. Um, specific ones are like priority queues, right? We have these Oracle networks in order to provide information into the infrastructure that will inform the economy of when it should do liquidations or when it should do, um, uh, uh, you know, how it should do pricing or trading. Those are critical elements to keep the overall system running. Those want to be prioritized over, um, you know, uh, even important NFT releases, right? And so, so there's prioritization mechanisms, performance enhancements, scaling enhancements, all the kinds of things that you want in an infrastructure. We've got both those happening and also programs to enhance uh, the, the, the Agoric VM over time. Um, we have for the validators, because many of the, you in the room are validators, and this was one of the biggest asks, was integration with Cosmos SDK's awesome state sync. State sync allows multiple validators at a particular block to go, okay, here's a snapshot that we all agree cryptographically hashes up to the current state of the chain, which means a new validator can come in, download it, get live in seconds rather than hours or days or what have you. And so, so we have state sync. The interesting innovation and challenge, and one of the key things about the Agoric stack is, and we'll be talking about this over the next several months, is there's a lot of awesome technology that comes from literally decades of building up towards this, uh, towards this framework and platform, but the state sync incorporates not just the normal what's the Merkle tree at this particular block height, but what's the in-flight running state of live JavaScript processor processes that run for months with your smart contract state. So a smart contract, instead of, I mean, it can do the, I want to record my structured state in the Merkle tree in a way that blah, 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 blah. Or it can just say, you know, here's a variable, keep running. When someone comes in, pay them out. It's just a live process. It'll run forever until, the, until it shuts down on chain. And it fits into the state sync model, right? It's this live, continuously persistent process that's part of the running blockchain. Um, that, that, that you know, validators can still launch in seconds. So that's, that's, that's some really cool technology if you're into uh, that layer of, of, of architecture of the system. I mentioned the Oracle network, support for the Oracle, integration for the Oracle, and production of the Oracle by uh, simply staking P2P and several other um, uh, uh, chain link node operators that are, provide, that are producing a new Oracle network direct specifically for the Agoric blockchain that will both drive the inter-protocol but also provide JavaScript components. So, you know, a JavaScript contract really just runs in and lives in and launches in an information-rich environment. And then finally, as I mentioned, the inner protocol, I'm going to go into that specific, a, a little bit more specifically, right? What is the inter, inter protocol? What is IST? You know, we first introduced it last year just after UST collapsed to be clear, you know, what was, you know, how it was a robust, um, I won't say successor because it was always a thing, it was always part of the planned overall economy. But the opportunity to, to the value of being able to have a, a stable token that starts out over collateralized, but can evolve as we learn more, as we come up with more robust mechanisms, more you know, organic demand built into an economy that will keep a blockchain running and going, or keep a, a stable uh, token running and going and, and stable in spite of not being fully backed or what have you, but it starts out 
over collateralized, native to IBC, and so it will launch, and this was, you know, the, the, the Agoric uh, build stakers voted on this, that it will launch with Atom as its initial backing. So the, that, that unlocks liquidity in Atom where you can bring it over, lock it up in a vault, a MakerDAO style vault, if you will, and mint IST against it. Um, and you know that's just sort of the 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 current release, and I'll talk about that a little bit more. A little bit more. So, um, if you all saw Sunny's talk and he mentioned, ah, oh, we don't need a PSM. To us, PSM is actually an important element, right? One of the things you want is lots and lots of ways to collateralize, uh, or to to enable, or to mint your IST. And as the market and the technology and the economics of the of the economy of evolve, the IST needs to evolve with it. It needs to evolve to new sources of value and new sources of demand so that it can flex with the demand on a currency as it goes up and down depending on, on macroeconomic forces. And so we started IST last year. It launched with the PSM where it could take the four, five, six, eight, whatever the heck it is, different variants of stable tokens that existed, roll them up and consolidate them so from any of them you could mint IST. You know, from the point of view of a backbone of an economy, having lots of sources of asset is great. From the point of view of an end user, yeah, not so good, right? You know, the, the oh, which of these 20 stable dollar-ish things should I use? The answer is there needs to be one, right? That, that, that you need, you know, systems to consolidate that. And IST consolidates all of that. And from our perspective, dollars in a bank, USD bank account is one of the many collaterals that you would like to underpin a, sta you know, a, a stable token for the ecosystem, right? I mean, there's trillions of dollars in, US state, in, 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 in USD in bank accounts across the world. You'd like to be able to collateralize that. So we outsource that problem to Circle for now. But of course, you know, what you want is something that is much more decentralized, much less under control of one regime. You know, you know, so you want to be able to underpin that, but that can't be your only thing. And you've got to, as with any system that's responsibly managed financially, you've got to have minting limits. You've got to have uh, oversight by people that are expert in this area. You've got to have multiple mechanisms so you're not vulnerable to, um, you know, one collapse of one bank in Silicon Valley, right? Um, and so, so with this release, with this mainnet 1B release, we add to that PSM, which is, again, valuable to get USD collateral, and value, it helps to make the, the token have parity with the dollar, which is convenient from an from a, from a accounting point of view to a lot of businesses. It's not critical, but it's really convenient. And then we added to that vaults, right? Over collateralized vaults where you can bring a volatile asset or a relatively volatile asset, one whose value goes up and down over time, and, and lock it up in a vault and mint IST against that, right? That was always a core part of the proposition. Now, we had talked in detail last Cosmoverse about some of the mechanisms. They have changed since then. Originally, we were going to do liquidations where if the value of the collateral falls below a threshold, then the system can sell it in order to cover the debt and everything remains solvent. Originally, that was designed to sell against an AMM, right? Um, and there was going to be a native AMM on the Agoric platform. But, you know, Osmosis, Crescent, ShadeSwap, all of these guys rolled out awesome AMMs that really knocked it out of the park in various dimensions. And so it wasn't critical to get an, AM out, AM, an AMM out in order to underpin the liquidation. And so instead it's launching, the, 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 the vaults mechanism is, is launching with a reserve to provide, to cover shortfalls in case liquidation is slow, but with a Dutch auction that will run on a nice orchestrated regular basis, con, you know, controlled by the community to determine, and by the ec economic committee, to determine what's a sound rhythm of liquidation to ensure that the system stays solvent and robust over time. And so those are some of the those are some of the key elements of IST. We'll be around to talk about it a lot more, but that's a big part of this release. And again, that was all about mainnet one was to bring all this stuff and lay the groundwork for you know general purpose applications and third parties to be able to deploy on the system. And so IST is out there. Um, it's already you know, available on, on several different exchanges and, and the bridges of tokens across Axelar and Gravity. All of those are supported and managed and have been for months. Now with Vaults coming on board, it'll start with, uh, with Atom. And then there is a contest where, where, um, uh, where you can suggest and vote on what should be the next collateral.
that's not a binding vote, that's just interest and excitement and advice to the, uh, the, the econ committee and, and uh, education to the rest of the, uh, uh, the, the IST ecosystem, but it's valuable input, so, so please participate. Okay, so the problem, you know, the nice thing about dollars in a US bank account is it has a usability advantage that it's easy to put dollars in a bank account if you already have some. But if you spend a lot of time building up an asset, you know, like Atom or Juno or Evmos or, you know, Osmosis or what have you, you know, you might or might not have a bunch of dollars in a bank account. You would like to be able to collateralize for that. That's what vaults are for. But from a usability point of view, man, you, when you're bringing in, you know, new people to be end users in a retail space, they probably just want to swipe a credit card in order to buy that cool NFT or buy a ticket from Omniflix or what have you. And so, you know, so, so we're working with Kato to get that integration to make the usability curve very, very smooth, as you would expect from a payment instrument, right? Um, and then there are chains that, you know, not only is it on exchanges, but they're now chains that will be providing organic demand. So we're working with Akash to get it to be something that you can use to pay for um, uh, execution time and cloud service time in the awesome Akash network. We're working with Omniflix so you can, be, you can uh, pay for NFTs, tickets, what have you, the things that, 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 that you know, man. Organic use case, ticketing is a $60 billion industry. That's one of the ones that we really all want to get into. Omniflix is getting there, and, it'll, and, and they'll be able to buy tickets with, with uh, IST, which is really awesome. So that's mainnet 1B release. So what's next, right? That, that, that wraps up that phase, and now we're into the mainnet 2, which is general purpose use cases, third parties being able to build on this stuff. And for starters, it'll be permissioned. Right, where permissioned is not by Agora, permissioned is by the, the build stakers on the chain. Um, and uh, and so, um, so what's an example, right? Calypso is one of the projects building on here, which this started with a bounty for a component to do remote control over interchain accounts of, I think, a Kosh uh, network, uh, network services, which will be used for more interesting advanced services going forward. But this is to use ICA, you know, like Entry Point was talking about, to control positions and trading on other chains, right? To have smart contracts in JavaScript extensible with the model of the, the, that, that the Agoric platform provides for extensibility for doing interesting integration of financial services across all the many awesome chains that are accessible across, across um, IBC. Um, Crabble is a joint project where the core contracts are to be to do NFT lending. And this is not where I lock up an NFT and mint IST against it. No, no. This is where I have an NFT that will get me into get will get me a discount at tickets at the next ball game, and I can't go. So I will lend it to you, and now you can use my NFT um, uh, in, in the way that I would be able to use that NFT. So it's literally being able to lend you the NFT. That's kind of a, co a cool concept. Um, it fits well with a bunch of the kinds of Legos that I mentioned earlier, and, uh, and they're moving forward. And then finally, the last slide I'll talk about is someone mentioned it earlier, uh, you know, the MetaMask wallet. Again, Agoric is about... You know, we integrate technology, we interoperate with, with, with uh, a lot of Cosmos chains, we participate and we're very excited about all of the growth of, of IBC and interchain accounts and so forth. But, but, you know, our eye is really on the much, much larger markets. So we've been working with MetaMask for years on secure JavaScript, or sorry, the, 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 the hardened JavaScript as the framework in which they could extend their wallet with third-party contracts, third-party components, third-party extensions that they are safe from, that the, that the hardened JavaScript protects them from, so it makes it safe for them to open the doors up so that you can have plugins for Cosmos, for Agoric, for you know, other, other uh, you know, chains out there that are not uh, uh, tenement-based, right? And um, so this was actually at one of the very first hack atoms we took the very first baby version of Snaps and got MetaMask to sign transactions, the fancy offer-style transactions in Agoric, to sign them as part of a, a, an overall application. So now it's gone from that idea with that proof of concept in like 2019 or very, very early 2020 to it's going to production later this year. We're happy to support that. And, and we're really happy that several others have jumped on board to really to really fund and help drive the, the, um, uh, the development of the Cosmos Snaps plugin 
so that so that we can bridge Cosmos out via MetaMask to their you know two and a half million users a day, thirty million a month um, community of users. Because again, we all really need to be keeping our eye on the ball, collaborating to get out to the much larger world of developers and the much larger use cases. So i um, very excited. Thank you for Mystic Labs, who's do doing the implementation work, the Atom Accelerator that voted to fund it, um, the, the, the um, Osmosis uh, Grants Program, DCF Grants Program. We're supporting them. <coughs> and um, wait, what, and what? Oh, and Skip Protocol, yes, who, 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 who is driving the effort. Thank you, Sam, who's floating around here somewhere. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I apologize for it not being front and center here, guys. Um, but we all need this. We all love it. Um, and that doesn't mean we don't love Kepler and Leap Wallet. But this is one of those things where we all need to start getting, trying out all these things in order to grow out there. So thank you very much. I will leave you with, we do have a workshop. There's the QR code for getting signed up for workshops. They do get filled up, so, you know, Stick up your camera, take a picture of me. No, no, take a picture of that. Um, and uh, uh, please join the, uh, you know, join the program. Check out what, you know, all the things that are, that are happening on the Agoric platform. Heading out now into that general purpose uh, platform world. Um, and in your swag bag, I think they mentioned it earlier today, is a golden ticket to go and vote on what should be the next collateral. Vaults are all about unlocking the asset value that you guys created. So, you know, come help make that happen um, uh, by participating in that. So, thank you all very much.